In Section 2 of this STEM instructional program, we will be discussing how an aircraft is controlled in flight. In subsequent lessons to this section, we will be introducing you to basic flight controls and surfaces in aircraft, additional flight surfaces that you might see on more advanced aircraft, and the basic flight surfaces and controls that would be found in rotary wing aircraft or helicopters. In order to start the discussion of flight surfaces and controls, we need to examine the concept of three-dimensional motion. To do that, we will start with the graph that most are familiar with. The graph typically used in math class is a coordinate system around a horizontal X and a vertical Y axis. This graph provides only a two-dimensional perspective, but aircraft move in three dimensions. To show this, a third axis, the Z axis, is added. This projection shows the Z axis at an angle to show it on the page. In actuality, the Z axis would be perpendicular to the other two and point straight out of the page. If we were to look at an aircraft from three different perspectives, front, side, and top, we could see the relationship between these three perpendicular axes. Looking at the aircraft from a front or nose-on view, the x-axis would run through the wings and the y-axis would run vertically through the cockpit. The z-axis in this case would project straight out of the slide. Looking at the aircraft in the side view, the y-axis would again run vertically through the cockpit while the z-axis would run from the nose to the tail of the aircraft. Now the x-axis would point out of the slide. Looking at the aircraft from a top-down view, the x-axis would run through the wings and the z-axis would run from the nose to the tail of the aircraft. Here, the y-axis would point out of the slide. In math class, we plot points on a graph to show position or to draw two-dimensional figures. At some point, we even expand these drawings to three-dimensional shapes. For an aircraft motion, we will focus not on position or location, but on rotation around the three axes. These rotations are the focus of aircraft motion and on the basic design of aircraft control surfaces. The first motion we will look at is rotation around the y-axis. In terms of aircraft motion, movement around the y-axis is referred to as yaw. A change in yaw would cause the aircraft to either turn to the right or to turn to the left. We are most familiar with this rotation around the y-axis as that is what we do in an automobile when we move the steering wheel to the left or to the right. While this is the only axis of motion for a car, an aircraft can be steered in two other dimensions. Motion around the x-axis is referred to as pitch. Changes in the controls that manage pitch would cause the aircraft to nose up or climb. A different change to these same controls would cause the aircraft to nose down or descend. Motion around the z-axis is referred to as roll. Changes in the controls that manage roll would cause the aircraft to tip or to roll to the left. An opposite movement of those same controls would cause the aircraft to roll to the right. To make an aircraft change direction, however, would require changes in more than one dimension. The flight of an aircraft takes place in three dimensions, so aircraft control surfaces must be able to provide for movement in each. To cause these motions, an aircraft must be able to rotate around its x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. These rotations translate to yaw, pitch, and roll movements of the aircraft. In the other parts of this lesson on flight surfaces and controls, we will be covering how these motions are made and what structures on an aircraft and on a helicopter cause these motions to occur.